Take your Bible, Psalm 119 and verse 45, Psalm 119, verse 45. I'm waiting for Brother Sandy and Brother Heidenreich to sing a duet. Amen. That'll be very special. Amen. And when I say special, I mean special. And um, is that right, Brother? Yeah, that'd be very special. I think one of these services, we ought to get them both up here to sing a duet just to see what it sound like. But anyway... Psalm 119. That was wrong, wasn't it? But anyway, but it's true. But anyway, Psalm 119, 45. Once you've found it, let's all stand as we read the Word of God. Psalm 119 and verse 45. If you have it, give a good strong amen. amen. I think the ladies have it. Let's try that one more time. If you have it, give, if you have it, give a good strong amen. amen. There you go. Here, scripture says, verse 45, I will walk at, what's that next word? Liberty, for I seek thy what? Precepts. I want to talk about tonight on the subject of walking at liberty. What does it mean? What does it mean to have liberty in Christ? That, that phrase is oftentimes very, very misconstrued in our Christian circles. And tonight, I want to talk about walking at liberty. Father, take these next few minutes, and Lord, allow me to be a help to your people. That's my desire. Pray that when we walk out of this place, Lord, I pray that we would walk at liberty. Lord, it's very clear in thy word where the liberty is found. I pray that you'd bless. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. There's much talk. Give me some monitors if you can, again if you can. There's much talk about the believer's freedom once they get saved. There are some who believe that nobody, that, okay, let, let me just say this. Nobody gets saved by the deeds of the law. And I'll just, let me just kind of talk to you just a little bit about that. When we get saved, we are not saved by works. We are saved by grace. That's how you're saved. Uh, there's nothing that Alan Domley did to ever get himself saved. Now, get this. There's nothing that Alan Domley can do to keep himself saved. Did you hear that one right there? Oftentimes, you think, oh, you, you, you're one of those that once saved, always saved. Absolutely. Why? Because that's what the Scripture teaches. God says the wages of sin is what? Death. That means that the only way that death, that sin can be paid for, someone has to what? die. Now, let me ask a question. Once something is paid for, do you have to pay for it again? No. It's paid for. You say, but, but how does that, but, but what about the sin? It's paid for. I don't always understand how it all works, but I do know this. I know that when I got saved, my past, my present, and my future sins were all paid for. I don't have to walk through day wondering, do I need to get saved again next Sunday? Do I, be, I, I did something bad this week. Do I need to get saved again? No, you don't need to get saved again. You only get saved one time. Now, after that, you live for the Lord, and God gives us freedom, he talks about. But may I say this? Because we're saved, can I tell you this? Is grace does not take away the consequences of sin. So let, help me out just a little bit. So I am, I am saved by grace through faith in Jesus Christ. You with me so far? I don't do anything to get myself um, saved. Christ did everything. He died on the cross. He made the payment. My sins are paid for forever. Now get this. But grace does not remove the consequences. If that's so, then this is what I invite you to do. If you say, well, Brother Domley, I believe that grace means that we're never going to be, that, that there are no consequences, okay? Then go out here in Rockwell after the services tonight. Go about 100 miles an hour down Rockwell. When the police pulls you over, tell them you're under grace and see how that goes. Now, I'm just being honest with you. Just because I'm saved and my sins are paid for does not remove the consequences of sin after I get saved. Sin still has consequences. Sin still does bad things to good people. I often say this. Good, um, 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 people who are doing bad things are broken by sin. You remove the sin from their life. Get this now. And you will find that they become good people. You know, the prison, the jails, the jail downtown, filled with a lot of people that were broken by sin. Doesn't make them bad people. Sin just broke them. 
You get the sin out of their life, they're good people. That's why you ought not to look down on somebody who maybe has spent some time in jail or spent some time in prison. They paid the consequences for their sin. Get this now. But you take that sin away. They can become very, very good people. But hold on. If, if but I, God says that I walk at liberty. There's liberty in the Christian life. What does that mean? God gives me the freedom to do what I want to do, but follow me. God shows me where that liberty is. Listen, if I'm walk, God says walking, he says, if I walk at liberty, hold on. If I'm walking at something, that means I am at the destination where it is. I'm walking, I come and I walk at the edge of the platform. Get this, but I'm still on the platform. Now, I can get off the platform, and, and by the way, you can get outside, and I'll, I'll explain this in just a second. You can get outside of the parameters of, of liberty, and you're still saved, but you're not going to enjoy the, the freedom and the joy that liberty comes from inside of the boundaries that God has for you and I. So, the, so God says, he says, he says so shall, God, God talks about we walk in liberty, but get this, but he also says, so shall I keep thy law. So therefore, Liberty means this. Get this. It means freedom comes from living within the law of God and not without the law of God. God has rules. You say, what are his rules? This book right here. As long as I live according to this book, I want you to listen to me. I'm free. I'm free. But the very second I step outside of the parameters of this book, get this now, there's bondage outside of the parameters of God's Word. Can I, I want you, let, me, let me give you several observations tonight, and then we'll, then we'll go home. Observation number one, walking at liberty does not mean I have no boundaries. You with me so far? The boundaries, you say, what are the boundaries of liberty? Boundaries are the precepts of God's word. Now listen, the psalmist says, he goes, I walk at liberty. Why? Because he sought God's precepts, okay? So we're going to make this platform where liberty is. God says, I set boundaries, which is his word. Let me, let me use someone tonight. Brother Allen, why don't you come up here tonight? And um, you look like a good rebel. Oh, I'm sorry, you're a skateboarder. But anyway, was that wrong? But anyway... Now, 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 I want you to follow me. God says, now, Brother Allen, you're set. you can walk, you can do anything on this platform. As long as you stay on, on inside of this black line, there's freedom. You can do it, but, but this is the boundaries of God's Word. Listen to me now. God says you can do whatever you want as long as you're doing what's inside of these boundaries. There's freedom in here. But outside of the freedom, come here, Vincent. There's a boogeyman. <laughs> Outside are the heartache of sin, and if you decide, I'm tired of listening to the preacher, I want to step out. Get him. Get him. No, what is that? What, what a poor boogeyman. Come on, come on. Brother Sandy, would you come help me out just a little bit? Show them how to do it. And uh, yeah, all of a sudden, we're getting inside the liberty here. And so all of a sudden, so all of a sudden, outside of the outside of God's boundaries, yeah, there, they, they start making him miserable. <laughs> Better watch out. The tomahawk may come out. But anyway. <laughs> now, your freedom, come on, your freedom's inside here. Your freedom's inside of what God tells you to do. As long as you stay inside of God's parameters, they can't get you. There's a fence. They, they can only come right here. Let, let, me, let me illustrate. And I hate to use this illustration, but this week I was walking my dog. It was on, um, where's, where's my wife at? Oh, there she is. When, when was it I ran into those other dogs? Was that Thursday? Thursday. I took an afternoon walk of my dogs. I got two big Rottweilers. They're bigger than Brother Allen is. They're big. I'm walking my dogs on a leash. I'm going, I'm walking down the street, and all of a sudden, this little chihuahua, <laughs> two chihuahuas, started charging my dog. My dog wrapped the napkin, the napkin around. He was ready to have lunch right then. He was ready. 
Vet Chihuahua left the yard, got this close to my rock. Well, I'm, I'm holding on for dear life. If Katie was holding on, she'd have been running down the street. <laughs> because my male rock, he was pulling on that leash and that, that, that Chihuahua was over there. Yep, 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 yep. Just barking at my Chihuahua and, or at my, at my rock water. And that rock water, my, you know, and the funny part about the rock water is this. He didn't bark. He's just saying, dear Lord, thank you for the food. <laughs> Let that thing get a little bit closer. Just a little bit closer. All of a sudden, that Chihuahua found out, you know what? I'm freer in the yard with my owner than I am right now. Right. Because that dog that's staring at me right now with a glare, thank God for that owner that's holding him back on that leash. Because that chihuahua just in one bite. Done. No more chihuahua. No more Taco Bell. Gone. <laughs> do, do you understand? I just ruined the whole sermon. You see, you got a bunch of yappers out there. You got got some big dogs outside, and you get a little yapping Christian. Go ahead, yap. Yeah, there you go. (laughs) Right here, this one right here. Go ahead, yap, yap. I want you to yap. Go ahead. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) Can you give me a deep wolf? Whoop. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so, so we're over there yapping at the preacher. Oh, you're trying to take my freedom. Go ahead, yap. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, and outside is the big dog. Woof. <laughs> Whoa. Okay. Woof. Yeah, there you go. Uh, I know the other voice is your voice anyway, but anyway. Now, won't you listen to me? Do you understand your freedom is inside of the Word of God? Liberty is inside. Walking at liberty does not mean that you can just go walk wherever. Go ahead. You walk out there. Go ahead. Yeah. Your freedom's inside here. That's where freedom is. Observation number two. Walking at liberty means I'm willing to walk independently in life. I don't have to have everybody pat me on the back. I walk right here all by myself. You know what happens? The the person that has to walk with the crowd eventually goes out there. Yeah. Man, you're the poorest little dog I've ever seen in my life. I need to get a girl up here instead of you, but anyway. I want you to listen to me. In the Christian life, we allow, I allow God's precepts to control me, not a crowd. Right. Right. Too many people are letting the crowd control them. That's why we step outside of those boundaries because the crowd controls us. Listen to me. I'm talking to people here tonight. You're, 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 you, 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 oh, these rules. Oh, these rules. No, those rules are there. That's that fence of safety that's trying to keep you from the big dogs outside that want to kill you. Listen to me. Your safety is inside of the precepts of God's Word. Daniel walked alone. You say, but I'm, I'm lonely. No, you're not lonely when you have God. Amen. See, inside of these precepts, you have the presence of God. Amen. You said, but I'm alone. You're never alone. You, you're, with, you're with the Lord. Amen. Hey, Daniel was all alone in the lion's den, but he really wasn't all alone. Why? Who was there? God. 
John was exiled on the Isle of Patmos for preaching the word of God. He was all alone, but he really wasn't all alone because he was in the spirit on the Lord's day, caught up into the third heaven and had a wonderful Sunday morning service. I'm telling you, the presence of God is inside of here. Can I tell you tonight, hey, stop trying to get outside and stay inside where the freedom is. So I said, observation number one, walking at liberty does not mean that I have no boundaries. I said, observation number two, walking at liberty means I'm willing to walk independently in life. Observation number three, walking at liberty means I choose not to walk in bondage. Why don't you listen to me? There's bondage out there. Don't go. Don't go. They'll, they'll tie you up. They'll let you enjoy life for long enough for them to get the tithes of sin around you. Oh, that preacher, he's too restrictive, so he jumps out. They let him enjoy it just a little bit. Just, just let him enjoy a little bit. Oh, yeah, and he gets comfortable until they wrap him up in bondage. Yeah. I want you to listen to me. Your freedom's inside. Bondage is outside. Yeah. Now, follow me very carefully. That means this. You're free to drink alcohol, but that's outside of the God's precepts. Thank you, Megan. You had me to be seated. You're free to drink alcohol. Go ahead and drink your alcohol, but you're going to find outside is the bondage that alcohol brings. You're going to find you're going to find poverty. You're going to find family problems. You're going to find yourself having attitude problems. Hey, go ahead. You can drink your alcohol, but outside of the boundaries of the Word of God that says that wine is a mocker and strong drink is raging, you're going to find the heartache that alcohol brings. Yes, you have the freedom, but that freedom brings that freedom. You get outside where the freedom is. You'll find that alcohol has the bondage that you don't want. Can I tell you, alcohol is still the devil's juice. It still destroys families. It still destroys our country. I would say stay inside of the boundaries where liberty is. What's sad to me is we got politicians who say that church is essential, but they open up liquor stores. God pity these wicked politicians. And I mean that. Gee, you, you, aren't you afraid what they're going to think? They better be afraid what God thinks. You listen to me. They can, they can write the preacher's tickets. They can arrest preachers and throw them in jail. One thing they can't do, they can't arrest God. They can't throw God in jail. God's still an omnipotent God. And somewhere, if we're serious about the health of our people, then let's go back and say alcohol is still wrong. Hey, stay inside where the liberty is and away from the alcohol. You're free to commit adultery. But you commit adultery, and you're going to suffer the bondage that adultery brings. You say, but well, I just, I, I just don't love my spouse anymore. No, that's hogwash. If you've ever loved them, you can't turn that button off. Now, I want you to listen to me very carefully. You have the freedom to go ahead and go out there, but listen, the bondage of disease, the bondage of having the babies that you got to pay for outside. I'm saying that, let me tell you, that the enjoyment of marriage is supposed to happen inside of marriage, not outside of marriage. You're free not to work. I just don't want to work. But you'll suffer the bondage of no money. And you'll suffer the bondage of being under control of the government because they will only give you so much. And then all of a sudden, we're the bad people as a church because we don't give out, we're not a bank, we don't give out money. Somebody help me out just a little bit. You know, it's funny, those who work, they don't, they don't gripe at the church for not giving them money. You know why? Because they work. You're free to look at wrong pictures, but the bondage those wrong, those wrong pictures bring it will, will, will bind you up. 
I'm talking to some of you men tonight. Listen to me. Your, your, your mind is, is controlled by wrong people. I can't even get close to talking about the subject without your mind immediately going to the bondage that your mind is under control with. I'm saying, hey, God says, hey, you keep your eyes pure. Keep your, eye, your mind clean. Why? Because outside is the bondage that will control your mind and your imagination. You're free not to tithe. But you won't like the curse that comes with it. You're free not to go to church Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night. You're free. But listen to me, but you wait till your children grow up and live the life of the world and your heart is broken and then you'll one day think, oh, listen, well, but, listen, it's amazing to me how parents that have two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight-year-old kids, well, my kids haven't gone bad yet. Yeah, you, that's, the, that's the clue, yet. You stay out of church, those children will, work, will learn the ways of the world. They'll break your heart. Listen to me. Hey, stay inside. Why? Because God tells us to. You're, you're free to watch, to listen to the wrong music, smoke your dope, lose your purity, work on Sundays. But I'm telling you, your freedom comes from the inside of the boundaries of God's Word. When I choose to live within the precepts of God's Word and not do wrong, I am free from its bondage. There are some who used to live the life of alcohol. Those who used to live the life of alcohol, you know what I'm talking about. You have to avoid certain places because the temptation is so great. You know, I don't ever think, I don't ever look at a liquor store and say, boy, I wonder, I'd like to go in there one more time. You know why? Never had a drop of liquor touch these lips. You're free to smoke your cigarettes. But the bondage it brings to your health, to your family, your testimony... Observation number four. Walking at liberty means I must fight what would take my liberty from me. You know what I'm doing tonight? I'm fighting what's going to take the liberty away from you and from me. There's not a lot of preachers that will stand up and say, thus saith the Lord, because they're afraid they're going to lose church members. Listen to me, I'm afraid that I'm going to lose you to sin. I don't want you to go out and sin. I want you to live a happy, joyful life. And I'm just, I just believe that if I preach this way, it's going to save some of these teenagers from, from going out into that world. It's going to save a daddy or a mama and a young person and a single person who says, who's considering going into the world. Hey, hey, I, at some point, we've got to be willing to fight for what we believe. Why are we free in America? Someone fights for us. These men who stood up a few minutes ago, we have the freedom to be in church tonight because they gave part of their life to help fight for our freedoms. We want peace without a battle, but peace is a result of a battle. Somebody had to fight for our freedoms. The American Revolution, we are, we are a free country. We're away from England. Why? Because of some men, one third, 30% of the people in our country who were the minority at that time believed they did not need to be under the tyranny of a king in England. They said we want to be different from England. 30% fought for our freedom. The other 30%, they were passive about they could care less. There's another 30% who are against the 30%. So one third of our country fought for for our freedoms. We have freedom tonight. Why? Because 30% said if we're going to have liberty, somebody's got to fight for it. Yeah. Yeah. He, listen. Come here, Brother Allen. Get up here, Vincent. Come here, Brother Sandy. Somebody's got to love those inside of here. Say, so you all stay away. I said stay away. You're not going to stay away. Somebody's, somebody's got to protect those that you love. 
That mama and daddy's got to protect those that they love. That mama's got to say, no, you don't run with those friends. That preacher, no, you get away. That preacher's got to say, no, that's not going to come in our church. Somebody's got to protect this line and say, no, you're not going to get at those that I love. I'll fight for them. Amen. The preacher that's always trying to make everybody feel good. You feel good? Here, let's raise our hands, sing kumbaya. Come on. Let's hold hands. Let's have a praise group right now. Come on. Let's get our purple lights in here and look like a bar. Right. Let's bring in our rock music and let's make sure we can kind of woo them in. I don't want to woo them in. I want them to get saved. Right. Right. This type of preacher, he says, no. No, you, you stay on your side. Don't, don't even, I'll, I'll break that foot, son. <laughs> this type of preacher is not the most popular preacher, but this is the type of preacher that loves you the most. He loves you enough to say, listen, I don't have to be the popular guy around. And I don't need everybody to talk good about me for me to say I love you enough. I'm not going to let them get to you. You understand that? Amen. You got a wife. You got some precious children. I'm not going to let them ruin you and ruin your family. I want to protect you. Preacher can't be the only one that fights for this line. It'd be good. Come on, Deacon. You're going to get on my side now. I need another boogeyman. Come here, Brother Ben. Be good to get the deacons on board with the preacher. Let's not let them in. No, no, you get back there. Come on. No, you're not going. No, no, help me out. Help me out over here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you, watch out. He's going to, he's going to take that side. You know, you're not going to go. Somebody's got to, hey, if the preacher's the only one, can I tell you, that we got to protect him. We need some Sunday school teachers. Come on, Brother Caleb. We ought to build a big wall. Let's protect him back here. Yeah, go ahead. Come on. Come on, y'all. Go ahead. Give us your best shot. That's not much of a shot, but anyway. Listen to me. You say, why do you have these rules? Because I'm trying to protect him. I'm trying to protect you from the bondage outside. If you choose to go outside, it's not because we haven't fought for you. While we're fighting for you, He gets tired of us doing all the fighting for him. He says, I'm tired of this. Go ahead. Go ahead. Just work. I'm tired of this. And you just go outside. Yeah, there you go. Teenager, you listen to me. Your mom and dad love you enough to have some rules inside of the home. When they say sit down, that means sit down. When they tell you to be quiet, that means be quiet. When they say you don't sass back, you don't sass back. When they tell you to do your work, you do your work. When they tell you to do your chores, you do your chores. When they tell you to do the dishes, do the dishes. When they tell you to mow the lawn, mow the lawn. When they tell you to take out the trash, take out the trash. When they tell you to be respectful to authority, you be respectful to authority. When they tell you to turn the music off, turn it off. I'm saying at some point, hey, teenager, mom and dad, Dad, love you enough to give you some boundaries. He said, Brother Don, but this type of preacher won't build a church. I'm not trying to build a church. I'm trying to save some lives. I'm trying to keep people from the heartache of those I've seen walk outside and meet these culprits here. Thank you. You can all be seated. Observation number five. Walking at liberty is never a motionless position, but it's an action. Walking is action. Right? 
So when I'm sitting and not serving, I'm not walking at liberty. I'm sitting in bondage. The Christian life is an active life. And the best way to keep these culprits from luring you in is get busy. Get busy. You say, do you really think that the answer to everything is so winning and going? To, yep, I do. So why? Because you have, you have a better chance. Listen to me. The person that drops out of soul winning is one step closer to going into sin. I've never seen one person get drunk going soul winning. Have you, Brother Sandy? How about you, Brother Hyden, right? No? Brother Moore, have you ever seen that? Anybody get? No. At some point, we've got to wise up and understand God says, He says, I will walk at liberty for I seek thy precepts. The precepts of God are the boundaries. I'm free to do whatever I want. And listen to me. Okay, illustration. God told Adam and Eve, you can have any tree in the whole world. But one. And guess what they focused on? The one. Oh, God. Oh, restrictive. Oh, can't believe God doesn't want me to have that, that one tree. Listen, you've got the rest of the world of trees. You're worried about one tree? The devil sold you a, bi a bill of goods. When I was growing up, my parents, the eight people tell my parents, you, you're going to run your kids off. And running your kids off means that your children grow up not looking at bad pictures and not watching wrong things on television and not having a drop of liquor, not being on a dance floor and not having the baggage of the world. If that's running them off, then let's run our children off. But at some point, we've got to get serious about this. My dogs are free inside the fence. Outside the fence is the dog catcher. Well, the dog catcher didn't catch me this time. No, not this time, but he will catch you. We had a dog named Butch. He's the best construction worker in the world. He could dig a hole like no backhoe could dig. We were filling holes and filling holes and filling holes. He was always trying to get out. He'd always get out. He'd come back the next night, and next morning we'd see him sitting outside the front door, and he had his freedom. Till one day the dog catcher got him. He didn't, we, we opened the door, and Butch was not there, and we knew. My youngest sister started crying. Oh, poor Butch. Kill him. I was the one having to fill up all the holes. What do you mean? She wasn't doing anything. My sister cried and cried and cried. My dad went down to the pound and paid the price to get him out of the pound. But he almost lost his life if somebody didn't intercede. Can I tell you, when people in our church get outside of the boundaries, it's not time to gossip. It's time to get on your knees and say, God, God, bring them back. God, please bring them back. Let's do our part to bring them back. But in the meantime, let's keep these boundaries strong. Let's be the church that God wants us to be. Why? Because inside is liberty. Can't tell you how many times I've talked to people and I've told them, you're going down the wrong path. They won't listen. And before long, the bondage they thought they could always avoid, they did it. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. It always comes back. Always comes back. Stay 
inside of the walls of liberty. The walls that they built around Jerusalem was not to make them in bondage. It was to keep them from the enemy on the outside. I'll tell you this story, this illustration, I'll be done. God often talks about the hedge, making up the hedge. You all read that in the scriptures? The hedge was a thorny bush, a thorny bush. It was to keep the wild foxes from coming in. Those foxes would get at that, at that hedge and start to go through, and those thorns would poke that fox, and that fox, only thing he could do was gnaw at that hedge, try to chew a hole, because it's too painful to go through. So somebody's got to make up that hedge. He said, no, we've got to fix this right here. We've got to fix this. You know what God's saying? The prick that you feel from the rules, the hedge that you don't like is because you're trying to run through the hedge to get out. You're the one causing the problem, not the one who planted the hedge. Get out of the hedge and the thorns won't prick you. You stay inside, you're safe. But too many people are trying to run through. And they get pricked, and they get in the other Oh, that religion stuff, oppressive. No, no, you're, you're just griping about the thorns because you ran through the bush. But on the outside, you're going to find the bondage. You're going to enjoy it for Sin is pleasurable for a season. And then payday comes. Father, tonight, I don't know who we're talking to, but there's some people tonight been playing on the edge, maybe even crossed over the precepts of freedom, and they're, they're enjoying the, the pleasures of sin for a season, but God, they don't understand bondage is right there. God, tonight, all of us, may we take inventory of our hearts. May we say tonight, I don't want to go into the bondage of sin. I want to be free inside of the liberty of the precepts of how God tells me to live. Heads up.